with this uh, background, with the background of what has been said by this management professional, let's now look at uh, various issues within the broad framework of strategy implementation. One of the issues, one of the important issues concerns the fact that the organization has certain objectives, has certain strategic objectives. However, these objectives, this strategy needs to be implemented through various departments. So, the formulation of strategy is a centralized activity. Of course, there are inputs from all over the organization, including inputs from the front line. In fact, um, as we saw in one of the earlier sessions, in today's uh, organizations, in today's environment, inputs from the front line are very, very critical in strategy formulation. But the fact remains that strategy is formulated by a relatively small group of people based on inputs from a large number of people within the organization. You will recall uh, in one of the earlier sessions, um, we talked about um, Professor Minzberg and um, the idea of uh, crafting strategy. Now, crafting is a word which um, is derived from the idea of making a product. So, crafting means making. So, making a strategy, as we saw in the earlier session, is a question of aligning two kinds of um, uh, perspectives. One is the uh, deliberate strategy and the other is the emergent strategy. Deliberate strategy is what is a top-down approach. Emergent strategy is a bottom-up approach. But we must remember that this reconciliation of the top-down and the bottom-up takes place among a small group of people who constitute strategy. Right? Therefore, organizational strategy, which is constituted by a relatively small number of people with inputs from a large number of people, this organizational strategy needs to be implemented by a large number of people again. Okay? So, this is the um, paradox that we are in. Strategy formulation is based on inputs from a large number of people, but it is a fact of organizational reality that strategy can only be formulated by a small number of people. Then, strategy implementation is again, again an activity that requires to be done by a large number of people. Right. So, this is the paradox which we need to address. Um, different organizations have different kinds of organizational structures uh, which help the organization fulfill its objectives. These organizational structures could um, uh, range from a matrix structure where uh, each employee has two um, uh, bosses, one an administrative boss and the other a functional boss. It could range from something as complex as this to a very simple functional structure where uh, the organization has four departments representing four functions and each department head reports to the uh, CEO of the company. This is a simple structure. So, we have a variety of structures which fall 
within these two extremes. What is important is that these structures must permit strategy which has been evolved at the organizational level. It must permit this strategy to be implemented at the departmental level. This is where uh, the concept of uh, management by objectives comes in. Um, in a way, of course, this is a tautology because management is always by objectives. But the reason why this um, statement, management by objectives, um, has been put together in this manner is to emphasize that there is a hierarchy of objectives. We had looked at this issue of hierarchy of objectives in one of the earlier sessions where uh, we talked about objectives at the organizational level, objectives at the uh, top management level, objective at the middle management which is the departmental head level, the objectives at the organizational uh, bottom, right, which is the implementation level, the operational level. So, you have objectives at different levels and these objectives must fit one into the other. It must fit one into the other to ensure that the organization's overall purpose is achieved, to ensure that the overall organizational strategy is implemented.